Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we're going to do something fun. We're going to tackle a few different types of heroes that are in Age of Sigmar that are basically crappy, have always been crappy, and uh, see what we can do to uh, actually make them, like, playable. What, uh, what we can look at here to make these fun and interesting and usable, as opposed to just being the things that are fun in theory, cool in theory, but end up on the shelf because they're just not good. Um, so in general, this is all of your heroes that are just out here to like do damage and kill stuff and not really much else. Um, there aren't uh, really too many of these that are very good in the game right now. And anything that is there is like underpowered and or overcosted. So I thought, uh, I would just kind of run through four different examples and, you know, kind of give you my thoughts on how we can kind of fix these and, uh, you know, take, uh, take some of these uh, trash units and turn them into treasure because having fighty heroes is pretty awesome. All right, let's start with your basic foot dork. These are your uh, guys that are going to probably move four to six inches. They're going to be, you know, five to seven health. They're really going to be guys that you want to hit hard and then not do much else. And in particular, I think they should always be like your quote unquote bonus heroes, like guys that you can add into a regiment. And I think for this particular class i think this really shouldn't be anything that you can even have lead a regiment like this is just a guy that is on his own he is not a leader he is just out for himself so let's take a look at an example uh the corn aspiring death bringer 110 points moves five six health control two save three plus Current version has seven attacks, hits on fours, wounds on threes, rend one, two damage. And it can do that like chain activation with another bloodbound unit to uh, get plus one to wound. And he is one of those bonus heroes. On average, this guy is going to do four damage. That's like their his most common outcome. So uh, I think let, let's just kind of keep basically the same body and the same points value and see where we can go. Um, it, hitting on four, wounding on three, I think is just completely wrong for this guy. Um, and let's move his attacks up to eight, um, to be one more powerful, which he needs to be, and two more flavorful and thematic. Come on, guys, come on. How did you miss eight attacks on this guy? Um, so I, I've got him hitting on threes, wounding on twos, uh, Ren two, so he can actually get in there and do some damage. Damage three, and I gave him crit mortals as well. I got rid of that whole chain activation thing, but I did give him basically the same ability that the current Exalted Deathbringer has, where if he slayed any models this turn, uh, you add one to the attacks characteristic for the rest of the battle and heal him back up to full. And he's a bonus hero, and he can't lead regiments, so this will deal... An average, or most commonly, is going to deal nine damage, and um, you know a decent amount of time it'll deal twelve. But he's still just moving around at five inches with health six. He's going to fall pretty easily. He's hard to get in there. I, I honestly think that again, this guy at this kind of a damage profile, at a hundred and ten points. I think he still wouldn't even end up in lists very often because he's going to die real fast. So he is not mobile. Corn doesn't really have tricks to make him more mobile. Um, so I think this, I think 110 points stays certainly fair and still probably not even good enough to see regular play. But this is like dramatically, this is like more than doubling his average damage output and giving him an ability that gives him even more um 
damage over the course of the game. Like now he's a guy that is aspiring to greatness and is becoming more great as he kills stuff, but uh, he's still just not going to be that exciting. All right, let's look at a cavalry hero. So same deal here. They're going to be uh, hard hitting. Your average cavalry is like 25 points per damage output. So I think we can safely go on uh, even lower than that. Um, they're relatively inexpensive, um, or at least I'd want them to be relatively inexpensive. So sub 200, uh, because they're mounted, they're going to be a little more expensive because they're going to be getting a premium for their movement. You know, you want them to be pretty mobile. You want them to have some sort of movement trick, possibly. Uh, again, this is a guy that doesn't need to lead a regiment, but I think this sort of lord probably could um and really doesn't need to have like much interaction with anything like maybe do like that chain activation thing so let's look at, at an example so chaos lord on demonic mount 180 points moves 10 health 8 control 2 save 3 up uh five attacks threes threes ren 2 damage 2 charge plus 1 damage and then the mount is three attacks on five threes, no rent, one damage. And it can do the chain activation thing for plus one to wound. He's going to average like six-ish damage on the charge, give or take. Um, which is not like terrible, but like right off the rip, I would say, you know... On the numbers, this guy isn't, like, as good as a single, um, a single Varen bow, right? And this guy should be better than one Varen bow out of your unit of three. So, what I've done here, keeping him at 180 points, move him up to seven attacks, so he's a little bit better than two Varen guard bodies, um, for the number of attacks that he's throwing. I changed his horse to be the same as a Varengard horse because he's going to be riding something at least as good as the Varengard horse. So to three attacks, force threes, rent one, one damage. You know, these are not crazy things to do. It This isn't dramatically improving uh, his damage output, but it's at least like doing something sane, keeping it consistent with the Varengard. Um, also gave him crit mortals on the tr uh, when he's... Uh, or with his lance and uh same uh, on the the damage moved his damage instead of to two to d3 so he's a little bit more random but got uh some extra pop to him potentially have a little bit of variability make him fun and interesting kept the hit and wound on threes so this guy's gonna average like 10 damage when he charges it'll be less when he's not charging um like, he's going to be a little bit better than two Varengard for slightly less than the, like, points cost of two Varengard. So I think that makes him, like, definitely solid and competitive, keeping that chain activation thing and give him the uh, same ability that the Varengard have to pile in an attack uh, twice, once per game, with the uh, strike last on the second attack. So this makes him a little bit more efficient than Varen Guard are. But I think because he has only the 8 health, I think he still wouldn't see, again, a ton of play. Because he's not a hammer, really, on his own. You really want to be pairing him with Varen Guard. He has similar uh, output to Varen Guard. But... Um, you know, he, he's still not out there. I, I don't know if, I think I would probably, like, personally would probably play a guy that looked like this just because I really like these kinds of heroes. But um, I don't know if that would make him get, like, competitive play. Like, I think this still wouldn't necessarily be a competitive war scroll. All right, let's take a look at Assassin Unit. So these are, as you might guess, guys that want to uh, go hide and pop out and try and gank a hero. Um, I think they should be things that are really punchy, that can just like, uh, just stab a hero, just one shot kill him. 
you know, again, you want these guys to be cheap. They're going to be able to do damage to other stuff, but not like a ton. Like their main job is going to be to go pop out and just like shiv a hero and then probably die. So you don't want this to be synergizing with anything else. You don't want it to be leading a regiment. So it's going to have to be a bonus hero or like be a regular hero that can't have anything in his regiment, like force him to be a drop. Um, which is another, like, I think that's a, a design level that they haven't really pulled yet, but I think that is certainly something worth being in there. So let's take a look at an example. The Skaven Deathmaster. So, 160 points, move 7, health 5, control 2, save 5. Um, he can only be hit on a 5-up, and friendly Eshin units, uh, including him, can... Uh, run and shoot and run and charge uh wholly within 13 inches of him he's got a shooting attack five attacks threes fours no rend damage d3 crit auto wound uh and then in melee he's got five attacks threes fours rend one d3 damage crit mortal anti-hero plus one rend um i think this guy really the main thing he needs is he needs some better special abilities. Um, his shooting attack, I just changed it to crit mortal from crit auto wound because, I I mean, his throwing stars are probably going to be pretty accurate. He's going to catch you in the eye with those. Um, and then took the special stuff off of the um, the melee attack, made it wound on twos because he's going to be pretty good at finding the uh that good spot to uh get you and you know get you very reliably um so what am i doing with this though um if a melee attack scores a critical hit then you um can slay one model in the target unit that has a health characteristic of 10 or less so if he scores a crit in melee against that most heroes he will just slay them outright um you can set him up in reserve and the, and in your movement phase set him up within three inches of a terrain feature and more than six inches from enemy units i want him to be able to hide pop out and uh be able to very likely get the charge have it not be guaranteed but like much more uh much better odds than like the usual nine inches that you get and he's super sneaky so he should be able to get in there pretty close so just let him pop out and uh you know really go after a hero uh or you know go in and at least be able to slay something of decent size like you know run up to cavalry and jump on a guy's back and slit his throat something like that He's generally not going to do much damage overall, but is going to be able to kind of get in there and like really get one guy anyway. So um, going to be better against elite stuff. Not going to have very much use against uh, like monsters or against uh, like horde infantry. Like the sweet spot is going to be like really uh, elite units and um uh, you know, rel like your smaller heroes that are under 10 uh, health. So I think that could be really fun. I again, the third time in a row that I don't think this is something that is, like, going to actually get played. But this is so much better than what's currently there. And I think it still wouldn't get play. <laughs> um, but at least it's fun and cool. All right, one last one. Sniper units. So there aren't too many of these, but I think they uh, certainly could have a cool role to have here. Um, they need to be long-range shooters. They should be really good at picking out and killing individual models, but they're not really good at killing units. They're going to be weak in melee because they're shooty guys, and of course, with everything else, you want them to just be a cheap hero that is kind of a throwaway that's going to... Um, get some poke at range but isn't like going to be clearing out enemy units like targeting specific stuff okay so the knight judicator is a good example of this 160 points six inch move uh six health controls uh two save three up 
Um, I think the uh, the melee on this guy, I think, is absolutely correct. Um, three attacks, uh, threes, threes, ren, one, one damage. Um, there's a lot of text there. It basically says you can get plus one to hit fairly easily with this guy on your ranged attacks. Uh, three attacks, threes, threes, ren, two, three damage. Um, so I basically kept everything basically the same on uh, a lot of it. I moved him to a four inch move because he's got a giant bow, so he should be slow. He should not be moving around quickly. I extended his range on his bow to 24 inches. Moved it to two to hit and two to wound so that it, like, this guy is supposed to be an elite shooter. So he's going to be very accurate and his arrows are going to be powerful. Uh, kept the Ren 2 3 damage. So, on both of his abilities that I added here, they are both conditional because this is Stormcast on having him not have used the Scions of the Storm ability this turn so you can't lightning strike him in and then use his special abilities right so he'll ignore guarded hero if he didn't strike down this turn and um when he scores a critical hit if he didn't use the signs of the storm ability he will um slay a model if the unit has a health characteristic of less than 10 or if the health characteristic is 10 or more, he'll inflict D3 plus 3 mortal damage if he scores any crits. So I think this guy becomes interesting. He's still kind of a slot machine because he's still only going to be 3 attacks with his bow. But that bow is really going to get um, some good damage in there, right? Like, he's going to just take out a small hero if he scores a crit. But his odds of scoring a crit are, you know, not, like, fantastic. Um, probably less than, or, like, about 50% odds of scoring a crit. And then if he's shooting at something big, uh, like, if he's shooting at a monster, I think it makes sense that he would be able to, like, aim for the eyes and do quite a bit of damage to them. Um... So I think this is fun and interesting. It's certainly a whole heck of a lot better than what you currently have for the Knight Judicator. But as with the others, like I think my bottom line on all of these is this. You can increase the power level on your combat-oriented heroes in this game so much, whether it be melee or shooting. Um, you can power them up a lot and they would still not be very good. I think they still wouldn't get play. Like you really have to get a hero up to like the level of a unit output for damage in order to have that be a real choice for, especially if it's going to be a drop for you. Like if, if it's going to cost you a drop to have a hero that is a cost that is not really like in the points. So I think that's certainly something they should be considering in design. I really love these heroes that are just here to fight, but historically they just have not been that great. Um, I would love to be able to build them out more. I wish we had better options. I wish we had, you know, a whole big list of artifacts to choose from to load guys up and do something interesting. But uh, this is what we got. And uh, I think this is about all I've got for now. So I will call it there. And I will talk to you all, all later.